Kevin Rooney was born May 4, 1956, in Staten Island, New York, the second youngest of five children. Growing up in Staten Island's Stapleton neighborhood, Rooney experienced the challenges of living with alcoholic parents. His father, in particular, would become verbally and physically abusive during his binges. Rooney often found himself in physical altercations with his father while defending his mother. These conflicts eventually led him to leave home at the age of 16. Unfortunately, Rooney never had the opportunity to make peace with his father before his passing. Kevin has a deep-rooted anger that he has just not learned to live with, his sister Mary said. Rooney immersed himself in street life, engaging in activities like dice games and alleys, and serving as a lookout for friends who were involved in car theft. His rebellious streak sometimes landed him in jail for a night. However, at the age of 17, he found boxing as a positive outlet at the Police Athletic League, where he trained under Ray Rivera. Rooney's talent in the sport quickly became evident as he went on to win several local titles, including the New York sub-novice Golden Gloves. When I won my first Golden Gloves, that opened the door, Rooney said. I decided to give it my best shot, and when it was over, I'm done. I don't want to end up at 35, 40 as an alcoholic saying, I could have done this or I could have done that. I don't want to live in a dream world. The sorrow. By 1975, he was participating in international meets, fighting overseas numerous times. His amateur success led to a meeting with legendary trainer, Customato. Some guy introduced Cus to me, Rooney said. I didn't know him, but I was shy for some reason. It felt strange. He said nothing, but everyone was watching him and eagerly waiting for him to talk. Rooney moved into D'Amato's home in the Catskill Mountains, where he trained alongside other fighters, including childhood friend Teddy Atlas. I don't take every fighter who comes along, D'Amato said. First, I watch them closely in action and see if they are worth spending any time on. Rooney impressed me the minute I saw him. The 19-year-old received room and board for free in exchange for performing household chores. D'Amato encouraged him to go to college, emphasizing that there would be downtime when he wasn't training. Rooney took his advice, earning his GED, an associate's degree, and even dabbling in theater along the way. Cuss was above a father figure, Rooney's ex-wife Bonnie later said. A kid would argue with his father. A kid would get rebellious against his father. I don't think Kevin ever felt any of those feelings about Cuss. Whatever he said, went. Kevin didn't think to argue with it. In the gym, he sparred with the likes of Wilfred Benitez and Roberto Duran, preparing Duran prior to his first fight with Sugar Ray Leonard. They said I was the best sparring partner of them all, Rooney said. Sparring with Duran, that alone was a great experience. Rooney turned pro in 1979 with D'Amato protege Atlas working his corner. He was smart enough, Atlas said, to see the opportunity and he didn't waste it. It's a different life now. Instead of living for the weekend to drink, he's got a solid future and a solid boxing career. D'Amato guided Rooney's career carefully, matching him against journeymen and novices, often at the Catholic Youth Center in Scranton, Pennsylvania. My theory is to take it slow, D'Amato said. You've got to get a fighter to relax. Most times you tell a fighter to do something, and he'll do it. He does it out of respect for you. But I tell a youngster why he does it. Then after a while, he does it automatically. Still, I can't predict when this boy will relax and do everything automatically. It could come about overnight. You just don't know. You can't put a date on it. By Rooney's eighth professional fight, he started receiving write-ups in local newspapers predicting him as a future welterweight champion. In June of 1981, D'Amato decided to take a risk by matching the 15-0 Rooney against the undefeated but relatively inexperienced Davey Moore. Despite Moore being the favored fighter under the top-ranked promotional banner, D'Amato believed in Rooney's chances. However, upon arrival at the venue, Rooney was not provided with a proper dressing room in the casino. Instead, he was given the kitchen, a bustling area with waiters and dishwashers coming and going, and no bathroom facilities. It goes to show you who you're fighting, Rooney said. Yeah, I'd call it shabby treatment. It's like saying, okay, you guys, go out there, get beat, and go home to wherever you came from. Rooney and Moore had faced off four times as amateurs, with Rooney winning the first, Moore taking the next two, and Rooney prevailing in their final meeting. Despite this, the motto was convinced that Rooney had actually won all four bouts. In their professional fight, Rooney was outpointing Moore throughout the first four rounds as NBC picked up the call in the fifth. This is round five, round five of a scheduled eight-rounder. Kevin Rooney on the white trunks, Navy Moore and the red. Kevin Rooney was just told in his uh, corner, you hurt Moore with the left hook, but you're not following up. you got to follow up. He's got to throw two punches, three punches at a time, although I would say he's been doing very good. Navy's now got 
little bit more confidence fighting on the outside. He, he took that round, maybe the first round he's taken in the entire fight. Boris settled down because he looked shaky in rounds two and three. And the cut over the right eye, and Davey Moore has been well taken care of. He's got a great veteran. Cut, cut man, same man at work on Sean O'Grady. As you can see, somebody is listening to us. They pulled up Moore's trunks, and now they look nice and neat. Fighting each other right at mid-ring. Great fight. And Rudy was able to land flush on Moore. Here in the state of New Jersey, the two judges and the referees score the fight. There is no three knockdown rule. Up to the referee to stop the bout. On a knockdown, there is a mandatory eight count. We have had no knockdowns to this point. Scoring on a round system with that supplementary five-point system. With the bout uh, concludes even in a round. Duva screaming for Moore's corner, get off first, and he's been doing just that in this fifth round. And the cut is opened again over the right eyebrow of Davey Moore. Davey picking up the pace wonderfully in boxing from outside. Now, as soon as he gets inside, you see Kevin building up those points. Three, four, five body shots. His head right into Davey Moore's face. Those are the things that Davey Moore must avoid. Less than a minute remaining. Round five. Davey Moore has been told to box, not slug. He came out looking to throw bombs. And now he's back to jabs and combinations, and it's been effective. No question, Davey's landing four or five punches to every one for Kevin. And he's building up a lead again this round. We left to wonder if Kevin had a big punch, would Davey Moore still be there? Because he's landed some flush right hands that should have put him right out in the Atlantic Ocean. Well, as it was told by his corner, he had those two very successful like hooks, but did not follow up. So that'll do it Punch for out. round Let's five go. with Davey Moore coming on the last two rounds. This is round six, scheduled for eight. Davey Moore was told in his corner between rounds, we're behind. Let's pick it up. Combination attempted by Moore. A lot of support here for Kevin Rooney. Out of Staten Island, a couple of busloads have uh, come from the Staten Island area. Uh, watching him fight, I can really understand that. I wouldn't mind taking that bus ride to watch a guy like Kevin Rooney fight. Very So we're one minute in. Bring him under, bring him under. Round six, two undefeated welterweight prospects. Davey Moore in his seventh professional bout. He's won his last three by knockouts. Kevin Rooney, 15 for 15 as a pro. This is less of tomorrow's champions and more a crossroad fight. These two kids are really at a crossroad. They're both wonderful prospects. by Moore, who is known as an intelligent fighter who just well the situations, take that right hand from Rooney. He seems to be buckling more and more. Those right hands are landing. But Moore has adjusted after the uh, shaky start as Rooney won the early rounds. And Moore has come back strong.
slug now running in the eye of uh, J.B. Moore. I wonder how dangerous that could be. That could be very dangerous. That's what stops fights, and that's what causes impairment of vision so that you get hit. It stings, it hurts, and you can't see. Ace Murata really got his work cut out for him. And this is round seven, scheduled for eight. And both have come out touching. This fight is in the balance. It's almost each round counts so much. Amy Moore, 22 years old, out of the Bronx in New York. Kevin Rooney, a 25-year-old from Staten Island, New York. He's come out of the peekaboo. Yeah, he's, he's coming back to fight like he did the first three rounds. But it's a different war in front of now. Moore's got more confidence, working harder. Oh, right hand by Moore. Really back into the ropes. And Moore looking very confident. Hot dog, he's got him with the right hand. For the first time, Baby Moore showing confidence. He does tend to hot dog from time to time, and he is really in big trouble. Rooney felt disappointed by the stoppage, believing he was ahead and that Moore's cut was worse than his own. Rononi stops the fight and says, The cut, the cut, Rooney said. I was cut in the first round. Why didn't he stop it then? Four months later, Rooney returns to the ring for another televised bout, this time against Orlando Montalvo. Belt and boxing. A couple of welterweights scheduled for eight rounds. That's Montalvo in the blue, Rooney in the white. And Kevin Rooney has got to look out for the left hook from Orlando Montalvo. That's his big punch. Rooney just caught Montalvo with a right hand. Montalvo comes back with his own right hand. And that right hand opened a cut just over the left eye of Kevin Rooney. Already, there is a cut open over Rooney's uh, left eye. And the blood is starting to flow from it. And Montalvo with, really, his very first punch cuts Rooney. And we'll see if that becomes a factor. Remember in New Jersey, they score by rounds. Supplemental five-point system in case of a draw. And we got a good look at that cut. It's off to the left of the eye, so it may not flow into the eye, but nevertheless, that right hand opened the cut right off the bat. And Kevin Rooney is coming off a, a kind of a long layoff. He fought Davey Moore back in uh, June of this year. Lost a controversial decision. It was stopped on cuts, so he obviously cuts. But uh, he was ahead on all scorecards when the, when the fight was stopped. Another good, strong right hand from Montavo. And a right to the body of my Montavo. The blood is trickling out of that cut on the left side of Rooney's left eye. So it's not flowing into his eye. And it is not a factor at this point. An annoyance for sure, but not a factor. Left hook by Montavo. Another right hand by Montavo. And Orlando is really having his way here in the opening round. Well, he has been very aggressive in this first round. Shown us literally everything you can show in an arsenal. Left hook, left jab, good straight right hand. That's the one that opened the cut. So, so far, Montalvo's just opened up with everything he has. And Kevin Rooney, uh, like Danny Long before him, has not gotten on track so far. Good pivoting move by Montalvo. And then he shot a right hand that caught Rooney on the right face. Ropes. Less than 30 seconds to go in the opening round. Rooney's problem, I think, is that he comes to a stop and is a stationary target for Montalvo. Well, he does not have much lateral movement, but inside, he's a tough fighter, as we're seeing right there, but Montalvo gives him everything he gets in that exchange. These two welterweights really winging here in the opening round. The crowd likes it here at the Sands in Atlantic City. Five. 
Let's listen in now on the corner of Kevin Rooney. Kevin, it's nothing. Uh, don't worry about that. Just listen to me, all right? And we talk in the gym about everything that you're supposed to do, and you're leaving this guy alone, letting him get brave. You understand? Yeah. You're not using your left jab at all. When you did throw it, you threw it from too far away. Uh -huh. You threw it the only time you threw it, you corner. It's up here, bro. That's it. It's over here, too. You know? So make sure you use that left hand. Use your step, double and flip off on it. And when you're inside, you're putting your hands behind the guy. Uh -huh. Let me see you punch on the inside. Yeah. So it's just going to be getting Stay still. like that. All right? Stay still. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, I want to see you use your jab. Move after you punch quickly. When you did use your jab, you didn't even move your head. Uh -huh. Now use your jab. Don't let the guy begin to grave like that. Okay. Move your jab and move quickly after Wipe you punch. Wipe a little bit of that off his All right. <laughs> Round two for these two welterweights. That's Montavo in the blue trunks, Rooney in the white. And you were listening in on the corner of Kevin Rooney. And uh, obviously, Al Gavin was working with him tonight with some proper advice. Yeah, and Al Gavin worked on that cut, and uh, he's had plenty of practice uh, working on cuts on uh, Rooney, and is a good cut man. Maybe more everything he could handle. Rooney's 25 years old. Montavo is 23. And I said earlier, Montavo is the more muscular of the two. Montavo, even though he's younger, looks older. <laughs> yes, he does, and uh, somehow it seems to have more maturity about him in the ring. I, I can't exactly describe that, but uh, he gives that presence. Maybe somebody else went to the weigh-in today. <laughs> a good double left there by Rooney, who also scores with a right-hand lead. Rooney first downstairs and upstairs with that left, then through a right-hand lead. And this has been a good action fight so far. Both these fighters showing us some, some ability and a lot of heart so far. And Rooney's now starting to get that right hand on track. He's getting more aggressive in this fight. And we're halfway through the second round. Rooney digging a couple of left jabs in the face of Montavo. And Rooney back in this fight. That cut uh, near his left eye, not a factor. Doesn't appear to be bothering him so, so far. It's bleeding a little bit again, but nothing serious. Kevin Rooney uh, has his management, some real boxing uh, royalty. Customato, of course, people remember as Floyd Patterson's manager, and Jimmy Jacobs, the famous fight uh, collector, and Wilfredo Benitez's manager, they handle him. That's a lot of uh, ring savvy. Big right hand. Rooney just caught Montavo with a short, chopping right hand. He's hurt. He's lying on his left side. The count is seven, eight, nine. Just beat the count from Tony Perez, who takes a look deep into the eyes of Orlando Montavo, allows this fight to continue. And Kevin Rooney now has a chance to put Montavo away because he crunched him with a short right hand. Montavo now trying to uh, gain his senses and also trying to score here. He's not holding on. And he takes another short right hand, throws a left hook, and Rooney here, looking for punching room, throws three straight left hands. And Montalvo, again, a right hand, and he's going to go down, and I'm... And now Montalvo got angry because Rooney wanted to hit him when he was down, and now Rooney hits Montalvo while he's being held by Tony Perez. So a controversial second round. Nonetheless, it was a knockdown. Montalvo gets up and takes the A count. Tony Perez brings both fighters to the center of the ring for a stern warning between the two. And so the crowd booing and then cheering. They what? obviously booing Rooney for hitting Montalvo when he was down, hitting him when he was being held, and they're cheering Rooney, uh, Montalvo. What a wild set of events, and we're going to see some of them in this second round. We're going to see the knockdown. Kevin Rooney is going to belt him with the right hand here. Well, down goes Montalvo after that right hand. This was the first knockdown, I believe. Yes, it was. And he was really stunned at this point. I mean, really hurt. And I really wondered whether he was going to get up at this point. He's rolling on the canvas. He did make it up. And now we're going to see the second knockdown. There, a big right hand. And Montalvo's hurt against the ropes. And here is where Rooney hits him on the back of the head. The referee's moving in. And uh, Rooney did not throw any punches after that. So I'm not sure if Montalvo has a beef. What's interesting was that he was, Montalvo was down on one knee. And yet he could sense he was going to be hit while he was down. He got up and he was so angry. That's a strange reaction after being knocked down. Bizarre. Wild second round. Let's see if he can last the third, Montalvo. Well, Mr. Rooney certainly got back in this fight quickly. He uh, knocked down Montalvo in the second round there and then uh, had him down again for a second time. 
However, he made the mistake of trying to whack him once more while he was down. Of course, Matava went bananas. And it, uh, a gross error by Rooney by hitting Matava while he was being held by the referee, Tony Perez. Well, that's the kind of thing that might uh, really inspire Montavo, maybe to, to, to come back a little bit. I don't know, though. He's really been hurt in, in his last round. And uh, Rooney appears... Oh, big left hook by Kevin Rooney. Kevin Rooney looking sharper as his fight grows older. Montavo with a good right hand to Rooney's left side. Kevin Rooney in the white trunks now cut above the left eye. So he's got two cuts about the left eye, and this is a bad one. He takes a right hand from Montavo. Montavo now wants to pick at that eye. Montavo with a right hand. And perhaps Orlando has been incensed here in the third round because of what happened in the second round. And, and there we see uh, Montavo's wife urging it, his fighter on, her fighter on, and there is a good right hand by Montavo. And I'll tell you, those, that cut came from punches, not from butts. Good Montavo, right who was down twice, has come back here in the first half of the second round. Another right hand by Montavo. We've got uh, Rooney ahead, 9-8 through two rounds. We gave that second round to uh, Rooney, 5-3. Rooney with a left hook to Montavo, who now has a cut over his right eye. Both fighters with cuts above their eyes. And in Rooney's corner, uh, Al Gavin is saying, uh, don't worry, I'll stop the cut when uh, when Rooney comes back. So he seems confident that he can do it. But right now, the cut looks bad. A good counterpunch by Rooney, and Montalvo is staggered against the rope. Rooney with a very, very classy move on that counterpunch. And uh, both corners are going to be busy between rounds. They have to mend those cuts. That right hand just clipped Montavo, who was really slowed down in the second half of the round. Well, he's been stunned in this round, no question about it. And he looks a little tired. Good right hand by Rooney. Rooney throws Montavo to the canvas. I, that's not going to be a knockdown. The uh, timekeeper is continuing with a number count. Well, now they start and the Tony count. Perez is also. And Perez calls it a knockdown. Wait a minute. There's going to be controversy here. I want to see that again in slow motion. Well, this is going to be a very difficult one to call. Certainly, it looked to us that when it happened, like it was like he threw him down. But perhaps the replay will show us something. Here we here we go again, and uh, we're going to see here Montavo go down. The question is, was he thrown down or was it from a punch? Rooney with the right hand. Well, Perez, Perez obscuring us. It wasn't a good angle. I didn't see a punch from Rooney. Maybe this angle will give us more clues as to what happened. Rooney with the right hand. Montavo spinning around and Rooney pushing him to the canvas. So there was a punch from Rooney. And Perez, even though he was getting Rooney to the neutral corner, continued the count and it reached 10 on Montavo. Rooney stayed active, fighting every two months until he received his biggest opportunity yet against the living legend, Alexis Arguello. He's is uh, considered a bit of a slow, a slow starter, but I feel that uh, it's, it's in my favor because it's only 10 rounds. He is, uh, he's known from the 11th to the 15th to really start to come on, so I feel that uh, it's only 10 rounds, so after 10 rounds, fight's over with, and I should have a decision. Unfulfilled ambition. And Kevin Rooney, of course, an opportunity to move into the ranks of the 140-pounders or of the welterweights where he is unranked. Seeing his opportunity here today, he has lost only once, and that was to Davey Moore. He was even after six rounds of a stop on cut in the seventh. And, of course, Moore is now the WBA junior middleweight champion at 154 pounds. So that's not a bad blemish on his record. Arguello in blue, Rooney in white. Tim, Kevin Rooney started out by crowding Arguello. He's not moving side to side. I, I think he's going to try to outpunch Arguello, which to me would be a fatal mistake. I would agree, Gil. I think there's two ways to beat Arguello. In fact, to hop right on him and hurt him in the first round, earlier rounds, or either outbox him. I think with Rooney, the best thing he should do is smother Arguello's punches. If he stands in front of him, he's in trouble. Well, that's what he's doing right now, Ray. He's winging himself, and he's never been known as a puncher. He landed a pretty good right hand right on Arguello's chin. Tony the aggressor in the early goring, and Arguello known as 
somewhat of a slow starter, having to be busy as a counterpuncher here against the Rooney attack. Tim, you're only a slow starter if the other fellow leaves you alone. But Rooney's right on top of Aguilla when he's making Aguilla put it into high gear right away. So Rooney uh, showing a little respect for the punching power of Arguello at 140 pounds has been walking in and winging right from the opening bell. Rooney's type of fighter is very awkward in style. He comes in, hands close together, gloves protecting his chin. But Arguello, we found out that he's effective with the punches thrown under. A little blood from the nose of Kevin Rooney, nothing serious, but uh, showing that Arguello, as usual, has been on target. Under a minute to go, round one. That was a little south in the border, Tim, but it was an effective body punch by Arguello. Watching him train against a welterweight on his final day of sparring on Thursday, he certainly looked like he could still throw with power and effectiveness at 140. He has landed some big punches already this round, Tim. Well, the question with Rooney, uh, forgetting about his boxing ability, was not coming down in weight from 147 to 140 will affect him. Well, his trainer, Customato, said that it didn't bother him at all. He said he was working out at 140, 142 all week in the gym, and he was in great shape. Another 20 seconds to go now in round number one. You notice how Aguayo is placing those body shots. They look like lazy punches, but they take everything out of it. Final seconds of the first round with Rudy really banging away. Gainley, oh, 
holding his ground and trying to punch back, but he's taking the shots and Arguello's blocking both of hands. Arguello drops one right hand on the chin and brings it right back down underneath. There it was underneath again. Under 30 seconds to go in the second round, scheduled for 10. We, much, we mentioned would Aguello have the same punching power as a 140 pounder. So far, he's landed some big bombs, and Rooney's still standing. Final seconds of this second round. about Kevin Rooney and in the first round he came at you and attacked you right away did you expect that well I was expecting that kind of fight because he told he told me he told the newspaper and me the, the day of the press conference that if right from the beginning he's a good slogger he want to try to do his business can I thought uh, that's what I was thinking he's gonna do the best he can from the beginning all right let's go back into round two and see the knockout punch uh, you had been working to the body uh, on him and then you came up with a, a perfect uh, left right combination yeah, uh, but I, w I wasn't thinking that it was would be the, that kind of punch because Rooney, right after he throw his, his jab, he covered pretty well with uh, with the, with the left hand, but uh, he dropped at that time, and I just wasn't good precision when I hit him with the right hand. Uh, we've got Kevin here, and I know he doesn't like to see this knockdown again, but I, I would like to ask him, Kevin, first of all, we're glad that you're on your feet and you feel all right, and we appreciate your coming over. Now, uh, everybody's going to want to know what kind of a puncher Arguello is at 140 pounds. He's a strong puncher. He, he can hurt. He can hurt you. Well, you've only had two losses, both to world champions. I know we're going to be seeing more of you. Well, that's what I plan on doing. It's, you know, I made a mistake. I didn't move my head after the right hand. He caught me with the right hand experience. I'll be back in the gym to correct that, and I'll be definitely be back. All right, Kevin Rooney, good luck to you. Thank you for coming over, Kevin. Four months later, Rooney faced off against club fighter Terry Crawley, who cut his eye and later stopped him in six rounds. I couldn't get untracked, Rooney admitted. I'm going to have to take a little rest, go back to the drawing board. True to his word, Rooney took off the entirety of 1983. During this time, he transitioned into the role of trainer, assisting Customato with his heavyweight hopeful, Mike Tyson. Rooney returned to the ring in 1984, but fought only four more times, retiring the following year after a one-sided loss to Mike Picciotti. In November of 1985, Customato passed away, leaving Rooney as Tyson's head trainer. Under Rooney's guidance, Tyson won 35 straight fights with 31 knockouts, which included becoming the youngest heavyweight champion in history. Rooney himself became the youngest trainer of a heavyweight champion at the age of 33. However, after Tyson knocked out Michael Spinks in just 90 seconds, Rooney was fired at the urging of promoter Don King. Rooney continued to train fighters, working with Jeremy Williams, Omar Sheka, and Vinny Pazienza, whom he led to a junior middleweight title. The gym is my whole life, Rooney said, and drink. Rooney's ongoing battle with alcohol eventually led to the breakup of his marriage and downfall of his career as a trainer. In December of 1987, he made headlines for assaulting a man found in the home of his estranged wife, Bonnie. The couple eventually divorced. The following year, Rooney was arrested for drunk driving, resisting arrest, and leaving the scene of an accident. Despite earning over $5 million while training Tyson, Rooney filed for bankruptcy in 1990 with debts totaling over $1.3 million, including over a half million owed to three different Atlantic City casinos. In 1994, Rooney was stopped by state police for erratic driving. He refused to take a sobriety test and assaulted the trooper attempting to handcuff him, resulting in charges of driving under the influence and assaulting a police officer. In 1998, Rooney took legal action against Tyson for breach of contract, winning the lawsuit. However, he later faced more financial setbacks due to gambling, poor investments, and loans to non-repaying friends. In 2004, he served five months for violating probation stemming from DWI and disorderly conduct charges. Despite court-ordered rehab, he continued to struggle with alcohol. In April of 2006, he was arrested again for DUI, but the charges were later dropped. Around 2008, Rooney fulfilled a promise to his son to quit drinking. 
According to an article written in 2016, Rooney was now in the early stages of dementia due to his boxing career. His firing from the Tyson camp remains a topic of speculation among boxing fans. When Tyson himself was asked if his career might have gone differently if he had kept Rooney, Tyson replied, quote, Hell yeah, I'd still be champion today. <laughs>